Good morning, Willowbrook. Today we're studying John chapter 16. Now this ch chapter starts with the opposition you find in the synagogue and the suffering of Christ's followers. People were offended by the message of Jesus. Now the word offended is the Greek word scandalizo, and that's where we get the English word scandalized. The words of Jesus were scandalous to the religious leaders and those in the synagogue, and they were very offended by his words. You know, Jesus did not want his followers to be offended by the hatred in the world because hatred of the world is supposed to be expected. But if we're persecuted because of our words, we offend others because of our words, then we're supposed to stop and realize that after that persecution comes eternity. You know, Jesus in this chapter is teaching about his departure. You know, he said, I'm going to bear the brunt of the world's hate. And so all along, he had been teaching his disciples and the whole time he's protecting them from the world. But now he's teaching them what is to come after he leaves. You know, when God called the children of Israel out of Egypt, he didn't tell them about giants or cities with walls that seemed like they reached into the clouds. You know, that was going to be learned at another time. But by the time they learned it, they would have also seen his power unleashed in Egypt, experienced the parting of the Red Sea, seen miracle after miracle in the wilderness. They would have drunk water from the rock. They would have seen and celebrated a victory against Amalek, and they would have learned about being obedient at Mount Sinai. Now, after seeing all this, they would have so much faith that when they saw giants in the promised land, then it would look just like gnomes to them. Walled cities would look like shrubbery. You know, when we look at our lives and we look at the faithfulness of God in our past, shouldn't our faith be strong enough to face whatever's in our future for us? Should not the trials and the tribulations and the giants we face look like gnomes and shrubs? You know, my last trip to Costa Rica while I was there, I go to uh, observe construction and to go over the budget uh, um, a young father that had been a part of the church was killed in a, in a motorcycle accident. He left behind uh, a grieving wife and two very small kids. Most of the church were just devastated by it. His sister and brother-in-law, they're key leaders in our church. His niece and his nephew are key leaders in the, the student ministry. Uh, you know, in Costa Rica, they will have an all-night wake. All of the friends and the family come. They lie in the streets and they stay with the family overnight with the body. Now, I wanted to go because I wanted to be with my friends while they were grieving. They asked me if I would speak at the wake and if I would pray with all the friends and the family up and down the streets, and their grief was deep and strong. And that caused me to remember the day that I found out that my father had departed into heaven. In, in selfishness, all I could think about was my grief and pain when I should have been thinking about how happy he was going to heaven. If I had been a little less selfish, thoughts of his departure would have been mixed with thoughts of glory and joy that he was now getting to see. And after several days, those thoughts did bring me to a place of joy and peace. You know, this is why Jesus was transitioning here about the Holy Spirit. You know, had Jesus stayed on the earth, he would have been accessible to anyone who traveled to see him. But after his ascension to the right hand of the Father, and the Holy Spirit was given to all of those at the moment of salvation, well, then the Holy Spirit makes Jesus accessible to everyone who calls out to him at the same time. All the promises of grace and peace are ours because the Holy Spirit makes them available to each one of us in our hearts. You know, Jesus had to leave for the Comforter to come. You know, the Holy Spirit didn't come to give us any new revelation. He came to point us to what Jesus had already spoken and what was written, going to be written in the Scriptures. And it's his job to make what is already true come true in our lives. Then Jesus turns the conversation. He's talking about sorrow, how sorrow will be turned into joy. And he compares it to the pain of childbirth. I remember when Harrison was born, as Robin was going through the pain of labor, uh, and she'd have those labor pains, she didn't like my father-in-law, she didn't like me talking about football. So she turned to us and said, would you shut up? Well, he immediately hopped up and left the labor room, and I, I hopped up, started to follow him, and my mother-in-law grabbed me by the arm and said, you can't leave. Well, you know, as painful as childbirth was, it was soon to be replaced with laughter and joy. It was also forgotten because we had Abby. 
You know, I remember when I had my first kidney stone, the doctor said I would now understand what it was like to give birth. And I, I can honestly tell you, I never wanted to know what it felt like. Jesus ends in chapter 16, verse 33, with all these things I've spoken to you that you might have peace. In this world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have is a strong promise. He's overcome this world, this present world. We're not trying to overcome it. He has already overcome it for us. We just have to live in victory. You know, do the things going on in our world today concern you? Do they cause you to fear the, the future? Now, we shouldn't fear what's going on in, in the world. We're not supposed to fear politics, and we're not supposed to fear pandemics. The Bible told us how our world was going to end, and Jesus has already told us how our faith in him and our eternity will never end. And so I like what the old song says. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. See you tomorrow, Willowbrook.